introduction to adoption, I was indeed adopted from Haiti, and I was, my story begins where I was located, found in a ditch basically, in the ground, on a roadside in a northern city in Capetien, Haiti, which is the second largest city in Haiti. And as my story goes, I've been told I was picked up, I was approximately three days old, and I was found by somebody, we don't know who, taken to this hospital and cared for there for several days, for several weeks, pardon me. Um, and basically, after that period of time, they determined that I was essentially an abandoned child and I would, could be put up for adoption. So I was taken down to the capital city of Port-au-Prince, and I was, three months later, um, placed for adoption. Then it happened obviously much faster. This is back in the late 70s, early 80s. I was gonna put my dog, and I would go home at night and cry, because I thought, how am I doing this? How am I placing children in these homes that lack warmth, care, affection? I had children following after me, saying, please don't leave me here. And I thought, oh my God, what am I doing? What, what are we doing? And I would try and challenge it, but obviously I was new, I was young, I thought, oh, I don't want to say too much, but there has to be a way that we can deal with this better. I mean, all of the issues that I had experienced, I saw reflected in these children. You know, the trauma, the identity, the lack of belonging, being moved from home to home to home. Too positive, too hopeful. <laughs> and I was literally told this by my manager, Judith, you're working at a gold standard level. We only expect you to work at a bronze. And I was gobsmacked. I was literally like, what? How could you expect us to not do our best? The, the fact that children who leave care are less likely to be in employment, in education, um, the stress and the trauma that they go through creates more likely to have a mental health difficulty six to seven times. It's baffling to me that we know these statistics, we're, we're doing the research on this end of it, but what are we doing to combat that? And by no means am I trying to take away from those authorities and those agencies who are doing really good pieces of work, because I do see it and I do believe that it's out there. But I guess for me, somebody who's been here now for a period of time, I'm still quite shocked that it hasn't sort of happened more. <laughs> you know, we're, we're seriously lagging behind here. Because if these children, these young people, who are experiencing trauma as a baby, are then going on to be adults who are at greater risk of health problems, being in the, in the um, institution system, being in mental health institutions, being in prisons, how have we not sort of closed that gap? So that would have been great, you know, for my family to have received that support. And my mom acknowledges now, I probably did need some sort of therapeutic intervention when I was younger. It probably would have helped me a lot. You know, we didn't have that, unfortunately, available to us. And as we were talking about earlier, shorter waiting times for adoptions, pros and cons there. Um, you know, obviously, the sooner we can get children,